Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look more specifically as to how monetary policy actually works. How do central banks like the Bank of England actually set interest rates each month? To understand how monetary policy works we need to look at the money market. It's not called a monetary policy for nothing. It's all about monetary economics and the money markets. Here is a basic money market where we have a fixed supply of money that the Bank of England controls and you have a regular demand for money downward sloping. The price of money is the interest rate and on the x-axis we have the quantity of money. So very simply, the Bank of England wants to increase or decrease interest rates, it needs to manipulate the supply of money out there in the money market. So if it wants to reduce interest rates, the Bank of England needs to try and find a way to shift the supply of money to the right and in doing so that will reduce interest rates, maybe from 5% to 3% or if it wants to increase interest rates, it needs to shift the supply of money to the left, which will increase the interest rate, let's say, to 7%. So depending on the state of the economy, depending on the level of inflation for the UK, because the Bank of England in the UK, the Monetary Policy Committee in the UK, have a set inflation target, so depending on the, the state of the economy and the rate of inflation, the Bank of England, the Monetary Policy Committee, will decide whether to increase decrease or keep interest rates the same. Uh, in theory, the Bank of England have got three tools available to them by which they can manipulate supply of money in the money market and therefore change the interest rate for ordinary consumers out there and ordinary savers out there in the economy. The Bank of England can change reserve requirements. So commercial banks in the UK are required by law to hold a, uh, a percentage of the money that's being deposited in their banks in the Bank of England. So when I go to the bank and I decide to deposit, I don't know, let's say £100 in my, uh, in my bank account, in a commercial bank, that commercial bank by law needs to keep a percentage of that money in the Bank of England as reserves. So the Bank of England can change the reserve requirement. How much do commercial banks need to store in the Bank of England? If the reserve requirement actually falls, then there is going to be a greater supply of money out there in the economy. The banks, commercial banks, can keep hold of more money and use it to create more loans. So if the central bank, if the Bank of England in this case, wanted to reduce interest rates, well, they can reduce the reserve requirement. Yeah. Or if they wanted to increase interest rates, they could increase the reserve requirement whereby more money is actually being stored at the central bank and not actually flying around the economy, which reduces the overall supply of money in the economy. We don't see much of that in the UK at all. Uh, the Bank of England has lost control over the reserve requirement as a tool of setting interest rates because the reserve requirement, instead of being set generally for all banks, uh, is done more on an individual basis now. So the, the monetary policy of the Bank of England generally has lost control over using the reserve requirement to manipulate supply of money in the whole economy. However, the discount rate is the primary way in which the Monetary Policy Committee set interest rates. The discount rate is very simply what's known in the UK as the repo rate or the base rate. And that is the rate at which um, commercial banks borrow from the Bank of England. So let's say uh, one commercial bank has a given uh, reserve ratio, reserve requirement that they are struggling to meet on a given day. To make ends meet, to make sure that they have enough reserves at the Bank of England, they might, deserve to, they might decide to borrow money from the Bank of England to make sure that their reserves are up to scratch. And the rate at which they pay, the interest rate which they pay back to the Bank of England, is the discount rate, is the repo rate. So the greater the discount rate, the more money is being sucked out of the economy in order for commercial banks to meet their reserve requirements. Whereas the lower the discount rate, the more, that central, the more that commercial banks can keep the supply of money quite high in the economy. So if the Bank of England wanted to reduce interest rates overall in the economy and increase the supply of money out there, they could actually reduce the discount rate. Make it easier, make it cheaper for commercial banks to borrow from the Bank of England, therefore keeping quite a large supply of money out there in the economy. Whereas if they wanted to increase interest rates generally, the Bank of England could increase the discount rate, increase the repo rate, make it more expensive for commercial banks to borrow money from the Bank of England, therefore taking money away from them and giving that to the Bank of England. So taking money away from uh, 
the real economy, reducing the overall supply of money out there in the economy. Uh, or the Bank of England can engage in open market operations. Less of this takes place, more manipulation of discount rates takes place in the UK, but in the US, for example, a lot of operations take place, a lot of open market operations take place. This is very much how the Fed manipulate interest rates in the uh, US economy. So if uh, a central bank engages in open market operations, what does that mean? It basically means they're buying and selling government bonds. Now think about it, if a, if a commercial bank is holding a government bond, well then, instead of cash, they're holding this piece of paper, this IOU. So a bond replaces cash. If the central bank decides to buy up lots of these bonds, essentially they are creating money. They are increasing the supply of money out there in the economy, replacing a piece of paper for actual hard cash. Whereas if they wanted to increase interest rates, they could actually sell bonds themselves. So whereas commercial banks were holding cash, maybe now central banks can actually take some of this cash and replace it with bonds, IOUs. So, in that sense, selling bonds. So, for open market operations, what could central banks do? Well, to reduce interest rates, they could very simply buy bonds. When I say bonds, I mean government bonds. So, by buying government bonds, we are taking away pieces of paper from commercial banks and replacing them with cash, which increases the supply of money and reduces the interest rate. Or, if they wanted to increase the interest rate, the central bank could sell bonds that the central bank currently have to commercial banks instead, taking away cash from the economy, replacing it with paper, IOUs, which reduces the supply of money. So anytime we talk about reducing interest rates or increasing interest rates, it's all about manipulating the supply of money, shifting the supply of money to the right to reduce interest rates down here, or uh, reducing the supply of money, which increases the interest rate to 7% in this case. So increasing supply money reduces interest rate, reducing supply money to raise interest rates. Three tools available in the UK is a discount rate used very heavily, in the US it's open market operations used very heavily. But in theory, three tools available and that's how interest rates change in the economy. Thanks for watching, see you next time.